Hi, my name is Richard Dezerga from Microsoft, and in this video we're going to look at a help desk solution developed by myself and Nathan Miller. This solution is going to be delivered using apps for SharePoint and apps for Office, and it's really going to build upon one of the original Fab 40 templates in SharePoint that provided help desk capability. So we're going to see how the app model can really elevate that application to the next level. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Visual Studio. Really quickly, you can see that I do have both a app for SharePoint project and a few apps for Office, and we'll take a look at how those play into the solution um, as we go throughout this video. So I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, starting up my app here, and we'll take a look at how this runs. So the SharePoint component of this is delivered through a provider-hosted app for SharePoint. And one of the things that we did a lot of work with in this application is dealing with the concept of tenancy. So Office 365 has numerous tenancies, um, and our app possibly could have the same sort of thing. So when I first go in here, the application, it's, it's tenant aware, and it's going to say, we noticed that you're a brand new tenant of this application. And because you're a new tenant, we want to help you get started. So it's saying, this is kind of a wizard that's going to help me get started. And it's going to say, you know what? We can load you with some sample data. So one of the things we've noticed is that for demos, it's, it's really nice if we can kind of populate the application with a number of kind of demo data points so that it, the application looks like it's being used. This might also be relevant for someone that's running a trial of the application and they want to go ahead and populate the application with some information that they can toy around with and see if it's something that they want to buy for their organization. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes and we'll run through this wizard to populate our tenant with some, some demo data. The first thing that it's going to want us to do is select some users and there's a number of ways that I can select users. So I can go with people that I follow, people that follow me, or I can pick specific people. So if I wanted to go through here and pick, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, Ann Wallace is one of my users. Um, I can go and, and pick her and, and add her to my list manually, or I could just do the quick process, which would be maybe go with some of the people that I follow. I'm going to modify this list, kind of delete a few of these just to get a little bit more manageable. So I think I have five people that I want to be my demo users. So these are going to be both engineers that are working tickets and the people that are requesting a ticket on various things. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this. And what it's going to do now, it's going to actually crank away at creating a number of tickets, a number of alerts, and a whole set of application settings that are going to really be the initial data for this help desk application and this tenant. So this will crank away for anywhere from probably 15 seconds to 30 seconds, doesn't take too long. Um, and again, it's, it's creating a bunch of data behind the scenes so that we can use our application. So it looks like it's done and now it's going to refresh our UI and now we're inside of our application. So you notice that I have a number of tabs across the top. Um, this is actually because I'm an engineer. We're going to default the person who installed the application as an engineer in the system. Um, a different user, they would get a much different experience if they weren't an engineer. So just to show you that, I'll jump over here and I have another user. This is Robin Counts who's logged in here. And um, this happens to be just in, in private mode. Let me refresh this so we make sure we get our app. And I'll go in here to the help desk application. And what you'll see is Robin has a much different view of the world. So you can see that she can only see things like alerts, tickets, history, and some statistics. Much different options available to Robin because she's not one of those engineers. So let's go back as our engineer and let's get some information entered into the system. One of the things I want to point out is we can already see some rich hookins to SharePoint. So you can see here up at the top, um, it has my profile picture, my name, and my title, the boss. So I can go through here and, and we'll see that rich integration into SharePoint in a number of different places. So the first place I might do that is here on my settings page. So um, there's a number of you know, different users that we created as part of that provisioning wizard, but I could add new engineers if I wanted to. And again, that will go and search for users inside of SharePoint. For ticket categories, we have a number of categories that we seeded the application with through that wizard. But again, I can modify this. So if I wanted to delete the security category, or if I wanted to change maybe the color of the network category, I can come in here and maybe pick um, you know, a different color for that. I can also start entering in some activity hashtags. And we'll kind of talk about these here in a moment, but let me go ahead and enter in a few of these. Basically what these are is if there are certain 
social tags that I want to be able to monitor as an engineer. Maybe I want to see if people are complaining about mail being slow. Um, I can enter in a number of different social hashtags here and then I'll be able to go and monitor different changes that might or different activity using those hashtags and, and hopefully be able to identify uh, maybe some uh, you know issues in different systems just by some of the social activity. So I'll put in a few here, maybe SharePoint, Link, Outlook. Um, I'll put in Yammer, love some Yammer. So put that in here um, and maybe just a few more so we can see how this will populate our application. Put Office and then finally I'll put Windows 8. All right, as soon as I started making changes to this page, also something that happened is a little save icon popped up. So um, we do some really neat things behind the scenes to see as soon as you change some things that you can go and do saves. In fact, if I try to navigate off this page, it's gonna warn me that do you wanna discard your changes? I'll go ahead and say no because we wanna save these. The last thing that this settings screen has is different SLAs for priority. So there are four different ticket priorities. There's low, normal, high, and critical. And each one of those can have a different SLA. And just for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna ratchet down the critical priority to just a single minute. So basically what that's saying is we need to close out our critical tickets within a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and save all of our settings. Now that I've saved that, the save icon goes away and I can go to different tiles or different, uh, different tabs in our navigation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's, let's take a look at activity. So we entered in some activity hashtags Let's take a look at how those are used. So if I click on activity, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go search SharePoint, um, could be Yammer just as well, but it's gonna go search for different social, uh, social hashtags that we've subscribed to, to see if we can identify some issues with our system. So, you know, someone was complaining that SharePoint was slow. It looks like this is a really positive one, but um, we would be able to use that to identify various issues that might be going on in the systems. Um, another thing that we have here is statistics. And this gives me the ability to go and get some really rich charts that um, are backed behind the data that is in the help desk application. So in this case, I can see tickets per day, how many were created and closed, and the distribution of tickets per day of the week. So we can see how Sunday things start to trickle up. By midweek, we have kind of our peak. Um, and you can see how that kind of works here in um, you know the statistics of the help desk application. One of the places that we're gonna be adding an enhancement to really soon is we're gonna be able to export all this data into an Excel app. So one of the apps for Office will be able to use that to pull in data and be able to work with it in Excel if we wanna do some additional, um, you know, maybe data manipulation and, and data mining on our tickets. All right, well, let me go back to the alerts tab. You can see that I have a number of alerts that our little wizard populated for us. If I click on any one of these Alerts, you can see it'll go bring up the alert details so I can see the category, title, description, number of users effective. Um, all of that information is displayed here for me. I can very easily do things like add a new alert if I wanted to. So I'll call this um, my new alert, or I'll make this real. We'll say Outlook is down. And I can maybe say this is applications and I'll just say, Outlook is getting updates applied. It'll be down a few minutes. And I'll say this is for maybe our building 23, and this is only affecting maybe 100 to 200 users. I'll go ahead and say OK. And that'll go and add that new alert to the system. I can go pull that up. So that's alert. Ultimately, uh, the only person that can create alerts are engineers, but anyone can see those. So it's a way for us to be able to quickly go and, and just, hey, I notice a lot of tickets are coming in about Outlook. So let me go create an alert so people know there might be an issue with Outlook. If I go to tickets, you can see that there are a number of tickets that have been created. There are a few different tabs that we can look at tickets by. So if I go to the tickets tab, these are actually my tickets, the tickets that I created. So I had these issues. If I go to a queue, these are tickets that have been assigned to me as an engineer. So a typical user isn't gonna see a queue. Um, unassigned tickets, these are areas of tickets that have been created but not assigned to anyone. So I can very easily come in here and maybe look at a ticket and, and be able to assign it to someone. And then history shows tickets that have been closed out. 
So I'll go back to the tickets tab and let's create a ticket at first. So I'll go over here and you can see I have a little add button over in the, the toolbar. I'll click add and I'll give this ticket a title. I'll say my laptop is smoking. And I will call this a laptop category and we'll give it the description of my laptop is smoking. I think the battery is bad. I'm gonna go and create that ticket. You'll see that the ticket shows up here. It will also show up under unassigned ticket. So there you can see my, my laptop is smoking. I can also go in here and start working this ticket. So there's a number of things that are going on on this screen. All the details of the ticket, we're also mapping using the location of the browser to go and be able to find where the ticket was open. So this makes it helpful for an engineer if they have to go and make house calls or go to different places, facilities around the, the city to, to fix tickets. You can see on my location, I can go have an entire activity feed of what's going on with this ticket. So you can see here's where I created the ticket. If I wanted to, I could go add a comment. I'll just say, um, it is it is still smoking. And basically that just gives me the ability to maybe give some updates to the engineer that might be working this ticket. As an engineer, I can come into the unassigned tab and I can do things like change the priority. Well, hey, I noticed that because this is a smoking laptop, there's a fire hazard, maybe I wanna make this a higher priority. So I can click here on priority and I can change it on the fly to something else. So maybe if I wanna change this to critical and maybe I wanna go ahead and assign it to myself. So I can just type in here, Richard, and you can see it gives me some hints down here at the bottom. In fact, if I wanted to type something else, you can see that it has, you know, Alex here. I can really assign this to any of the engineers that I want, but let me go ahead and assign it to myself. Again, by doing that, it's really not changing anything. So if I tried to navigate away, it's gonna warn me, you need to save the ticket at first. So I'll go ahead and, and save the ticket, and that will go and, and basically save that in the system. Actually, you notice that it left this screen, the unassigned screen. That's because we've actually assigned it. So it should show up in two places. I created it. So it should show under, up under my tickets and you can see it there. And it should also be in my queue because it's assigned to me. That's a little bit unrealistic that I would not only create the ticket and assign it to myself, but um, hopefully that helps illustrate you know, how we could use this application. So one of the other things that you can see here is that the duration is counting down. And in this case, it's red. And the reason it is red, let me actually zoom in a different way here. The reason it's red is because it's SLA has been exceeded. So remember, we set that SLA down to only a single minute, and that's the reason why this is actually showing as red. If I were to click on another ticket where the SLA isn't expired, so maybe this other ticket here, we can see that it's just, you know, it's just normal black font, but it still has that countdown. So, you know, that's how we can build that SLA in here and maybe make something a little bit more obvious that people need to work on. If you look on the activity feed of my ticket, you can see um, here was my little comment that I put in that it's still smoking. You can also see some system activities that were added. So it says that I changed the ticket priority to critical and I assigned it to myself. Um, at this point, I think the ticket is ready to maybe close out. I'm done with it. So I'm gonna go to the top here and I have an icon where I can go close the ticket. So you can see my little close icon there. I'll go and click close. It's gonna ask me some for some comments on the ticket. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say um, it stopped smoking, but melted away. And go ahead and say, okay. This will go update this ticket one last time. You can see that it moved out of my queue because now it's in the history area. It's a completed ticket. In fact, I can come in here and once again, I can see all the activity. You can see where I added the closing comment and it changed the status to closed. So hopefully this illustrates the help desk application and the rich interface that it has with SharePoint. Um, a few areas where I really didn't highlight, but it actually is, it is integrating with SharePoint are things like the social tags. So we're actually going and looking up inside of a folksonomy and the managed metadata service for pulling in those tags and maybe creating new ones. Um, it's doing a lot of lookups into um, profiles. So when I went and I did, you know, if I want to look to assign a ticket to someone that's going and searching user profiles. And then finally, the activity tag where we're going and looking at all those different social uh, you know, feeds that 
are out there, um, we're leveraging SharePoint Enterprise Search. So we're actually doing a search against the SharePoint uh, server or, or tenant to be able to find all this social activity. One other thing that I'll show you here before we go to some of the other uh, apps for Office is that we really built the user interface of this with a, a kind of a touch experience in mind. So you can see that everything is nice big icons. It's very easy to push with your finger. In fact, one of the things we wanted to do was make a snap view experience for this. So if I was working in something like Windows 8, let me kind of minimize things here. And I'll pull this application over here in snap view and here in just a second, it'll, uh, it'll update our UI. Well, maybe I need to refresh our page. There it goes. But you can see here we have a snap view and again I have my all my buttons here at the top and I have a nice clean UI where I could click on one of my alerts and then it'll you know slide over and show the rest of it. So again we're really trying to keep that touch experience in mind um, as we created the help desk application. All right so let's move on. I just finished a ticket. So one of the things that happens when I go and I complete a ticket is we actually send a confirmation email to the user at the end of that. And part of that is we want them to fill out a survey about that help desk experience. So I'm going to go in and pull up Outlook. And you can see here I have my brand new email that says um, survey, please complete this help desk survey. So um, I'll go ahead and click on that. You can see it gives me some information. In this case, it says my laptop is smoking. I think the battery is bad. That's the original note that this, uh, this ticket was created by. One of the things that you can see here is in the apps bar, I have a link to take a survey. Well, inside of our help desk solution, we have a mail app that's going to allow us to create, basically take that survey directly in line here. So I'll go ahead and click on this to activate the mail app. And you can see it's asking us, was I satisfied with the help desk experience? I'll say yes. What method do you use, did you use to contact the help desk? I used the website. How many days was your ticket resolved in? It was under a day. How would you rate your overall experience? I'll say excellent and put some additional comments. You guys rock. Say complete. And now our survey is, is complete. So in this case, we're using a mail app to really have a, that complete experience with, with the help desk solution. Um, and then finally, uh, we saw how I can do different statistics. So again, this is where the, the app for Excel is going to play in, is that I'm going to be able to not only go and look at the statistics on the tickets, both what was opened and closed by category, I'm also going to be able to analyze all that survey data inside of Excel using the app for Excel. So I hope this gives you a glimpse into some of the hard work that Nathan and I have put together in, in building a help desk solution and how apps for SharePoint and apps for Office have really taken that to the next level uh, for kind of the future help desk experience.